So in this video, we're going to take a look at the pathologies and need to know structures of the head, neck, and the face. So let's go ahead and start with some of the important structures or things to know, need to know things about this particular area of the body. So first, let's look at the cautionary sites or endangerment sites that we pay attention to as massage therapists. So just a brief recap, those cautionary sites or endangerment sites are areas in which we either want to completely avoid or we want to proceed and and, and go with our techniques with caution because in these areas are structures that we don't want to mess with or damage or hurt and, and, and then cause harm to our clients. So most of, the, of these cautionary sites and endangerment sites are triangles. So we have lots of triangles of the body, especially here in the head and the neck area. So we're gonna look at two triangles in this area, one being the anterior triangle of the neck and then the other, the posterior triangle triangle of the neck. So we look at these triangles and we know that a triangle has three sides, has three borders, and then in the center we're going to look at the structures that are uh, involved and that we don't want to cause harm to. So the first triangle that we're going to look at, the anterior triangle of the neck, let's look at the, the borders here. So if Dex had muscles, well he would have his SCM, which you should have seen already in this lecture, fr running from the mastoid process all the way down to the clavicle. So the SCM is what we call our lateral border of this triangle. And if I get closer, you can see my SCM pop up. So this is my lateral border of the triangle. Now my medial border of this triangle is going to be my trachea, my windpipe, my throat basically, my throat essentially here. And then the last part of the border is going to be the base of my mandible. So that's going to form this triangle. So here's the base of the mandible and then the two borders, the two sides, one being the trachea and then the other being the SDM forming this triangle. Now. There is very little reason for massage therapists to work in this area. So this is almost absolutely contraindicated to work in this area for massage therapists because there's many structures in here and very few muscles or anything we'd actually pay attention to working. So some of the structures involved in this area are one, the vagus nerve, which is your 10th cranial nerve running all the way from the actual brain all the way down, which and then innervates parts of the stomach and the diaphragm and the heart and everything else. So irritation or ex excitation of this nerve can cause what we call vasovalgal syncope which is that characteristic of fainting. So it can cause an immediate or sudden loss of blood pressure and then cause fainting. And we don't want to cause that to our clients. It's a very negative situation. The other structures involved, so keep in mind that whenever we talk about these cautionary areas, we have arteries, veins, nerves, and then usually lymph nodes, and then, and then any other structures that might be problematic. But those are the, the quaternity of structures that are involved and we need to pay attention to. So we just saw the nerve, which was the vagus nerve. Now let's look at some of the arteries and veins. First, we have the common carotid artery, one on each side. The common carotid artery is that artery where most people, if you see in those videos or most people in, in, the, in real world situations need to check someone's pulse, they might check it here in the neck and they're checking for the common carotid artery. So that's the common carotid artery. So that artery is taking blood into the brain, up towards parts of the brain. Well, we know that if blood is going in one direction, it has to go in the opposite direction. And so we're gonna have a vein taking that blood away, which we call the jugular vein. That one's easy to remember because it's right there in the jugular or what we know as the throat. Then of course, we also have lymph nodes all throughout this area, which we'd want to be very careful. So that's usually where your doctor checks to see if you might be sick. They check your lymph nodes right there, right underneath your, and right medial to the base of your jaw, the base of your mandible. So they're checking those lymph nodes to see if they're swollen. So again, there's lymph nodes throughout this area, which we just don't wanna mess with and cause any um, problems or injury to. The next triangle we're looking at is the posterior triangle of the neck. But to think of it, it's more like lateral to this area. It's not directly on the back, 
as we'd say, but it's posterior to the anterior triangle for sure. Now, this area is one in which we would just proceed with caution because a lot of massage therapists, as massage therapists, we're almost always working in that posterior triangle of the neck. We just need to exert caution when working deep and working some of those deeper structures such as the scalenes or the hyoids or any other of those, of those muscles uh, in, this, in this area. So what exactly are the borders of this posterior triangle of the neck? Well, one is a big border we have the trapezius. We know that the trapezius runs from the base of the skull and runs out to the clavicle here. So we have the trapezius. Again, we're seeing another repeat of the SCM. So the SCM comes this way, my trapezius comes this way. So you can see these are two borders of my triangle. So these are my, this is my medial border, this is my lateral border. Medial border, the SCM, lateral border, the trapezius. Now there is some debate of the other border here some people say it's the hyoid and and that's more than likely correct it kind of pinpoint the area uh, the omohyoid uh, but i for sake of ease and convenience for the lecture say just think of the clavicle so basically your scm comes from the mastoid process down to that clavicle then your trapezius comes from the back of the skull down to the clavicle as well and then we just ride along the clavicle so it gives us a broader area in what we're looking at but uh still in that whole area even if we were to limit it a little bit by looking at the hyoid we, we still just need to be cautious when working this area of <clears throat> the neck because what runs through this on top of blood vessels and nerve or blood vessels arteries and veins uh, there's a large complex of nerves called the brachial plexus the brachial plexus typically runs from i believe c4 down to about uh, t1 or t2 uh, those are the nerve endings of the brachial plexus those nerves then come down through the neck they come underneath the clavicle and then they shoot down through the arm and go throughout the rest of the body from there. So that's what we're really looking at here with the posterior triangle of the neck is just be careful of the brachial plexus. So with the triangles out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the pathologies. So the first pathology we're going to look at is Bell palsy. Bell palsy. So what exactly is Bell palsy? Bell's palsy is a condition that affects the facial nerve and the onset can be rather idiopathic. Oftentimes we don't know what causes this. Um, now if there is direct trauma, of course, to this nerve, that's obviously an easily understandable onset, but sometimes it can happen for what seems to be almost no reason. So Bell's palsy looks like a stroke. Basically, the facial nerve becomes damaged or irritated in some way, and then it reduces the amount of signal to the facial muscles of one particular side of the face, which then reduces the amount of tone in them and causes that almost uh, droopy face, droopy sided face, like if someone had a stroke where they, you know, the corner of their mouth would hang down, the corner of their eye might hang down, they might not be able to, you know, blink properly, their cheeks might be lower. Basically, it almost looks like half half of your face just kind of melted you you, you lose the uh, control of the muscles on one particular side of the face and looks like a stroke but it's not a stroke it's not as severe or or anything like that and it, it may be caused by a stroke sometimes i, I doubt that but um the condition itself has nothing to do really with a stroke and this condition usually will correct itself over time. I think a uh, roughly six months is how long it would take for it to correct itself. Now, massage therapy for Bell palsy can be beneficial. I've seen a lot of research um, ex uh, saying that cupping, cupping therapy, facial cupping, actually helps to re-stimulate the muscles and the nerve endings and then helps to recreate recorrect and rebridge this irritation and this um, loss of sensation and innervation in the area. And then of course just general face massage might be beneficial as well. There's very little contraindication to it but um, the benefits are somewhat loosely associated. And then the next condition we're looking at is conjunctivitis. Conjunctivitis is a 
technically sound name for a common condition we've all heard of or maybe even experienced or had one time in our life or know someone who's had. It's called pink eye. Pink eye. So this is usually a bacterial infection or it could be viral infection or it could just be irritation of the eye itself which then causes uh, that you know, redness of the eye, the mucus uh, of the eye, and that uh, goopiness of the eye. Now, conjunctivitis, depending on what it's caused by now, if you stabbed yourself in the eye and it was just irritated and, and watery, uh, unless there was a bacterial infection because of uh, bacteria on the object, the fomite that actually hit your eye, uh, it's usually contagious, right? So whether it's bacterial or viral infection, it's usually pretty highly contagious. And so this is usually a heavy contraindication for massage. Now, I'd say it's an absolute contraindication because you want to always you know, counteract the spread of disease and infection. Uh, but if you really feel like you want to get that massage in, which I don't recommend, uh, make sure you sanitize, 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 sanitize to the trillionth power sanitize. Now the next condition we're looking at is called a contusion. A contusion is a fancy word meaning bruise, which means there's broken blood vessels uh, under the skin and in the muscles. Uh, that have now caused uh, internal micro trauma and bleeding, which then leads to that you know bruised look, that nice r nice redness, uh, purplish to the area itself. So contusion equals bruise. Now the next conditions we're looking at are a subdural or an epidural. Um, injury or infection. So we're going to be very brief with this because uh, massage therapy we um, don't really pay attention to it much. So a subdural uh, injury is usually an injury or infection uh, related to the lining of the brain. So subdural is the brain, associate subdural to the brain and then epidural, which uh, many of your mothers or any of you mother massage therapists out there might understand what an epidural is. Well, if you've gone through child labor and pregnancy uh, and childbirth, well, you might have opted to have an epidural, which is a big needle that they stick into your low back and the spine. So the epidural refers to the areas of the spine. And in this case, they're sticking the epidural in the low back in order to numb you from that area down so it doesn't hurt as much during childbirth. So um, again, onset, you know, we don't need to care too much about it for massage therapy. It's probably uh, best to, um, one, do your research a little more in depth if you do have someone who comes to you with these types of injuries or uh, complications. Get a doctor's note if necessary, but otherwise this is a little bit above and beyond what the <coughs> standard, a, standard testing of massage therapy would require. Let's go ahead and look at headaches now. So when it comes to headaches, they can come in uh, a few flavors here. So we have tension headaches and we can have migraine headaches. Tension headaches are pretty simple. They relate from or originate from muscular tension. So these muscles in and around the head and the face and the neck develop tension, possibly even trigger points that will then refer pain into and around the head, causing that pain in usually a specific pattern. So usually feeling pain behind the eye, feeling that you know, uh, side, uh, sideways headache in the temple, maybe even the headband headache. Those are usually indications of trigger points. Remember a trigger point is a hyper irritable uh, space or part of a muscle or connective tissue that usually refers pain, painful or other sensations to another area of the body. So typical muscles involved with your tension headaches are gonna be the SCM, trapezius, levator scapula, scalenes, uh, the temporal masseter bone, or masseter and the temporal muscle as well. So any of those muscles in the jaw, in the um, side of the head, uh, big muscles in the neck, all of those might cause referred pain or lead to tension headaches. Now, the other type of headache we can have are migraine headaches. <clears throat> so 
With migraine headaches is a little different. The tension headaches massage therapists can help tremendously with. If, if, if the headache is caused by tension, we can work out tension. That's what massage therapists do. Now, as for the migraine headaches, migraine headaches are caused by a multitude of factors. Uh, they can be hormonal imbalances and, and anything related to that. It could be nutritional deficits, it could be um, sensitivities to light or anything of that nature. So when it comes to those migraine headaches, massage therapists are only palliative in their care. We might be able to provide massage and it makes the whole body uh, on the grand scheme feel better but it will do very little to help with the migraine headache itself. Now, the last type of headache we could have is a cluster headache, which is just a grouping of migraine headaches. The next condition we're looking at is called cyanitis, which is just inflammation of those sinus cavities that we've looked at in the head, neck, and face. Let's look at a condition affecting the only joint we've really seen in this lecture, that temporomandibular joint. In this case, we're looking at the dysfunction of the temporomandibular joint. So we're looking at what we call TMJD, temporomandibular joint dysfunction. Now this is characterized of pain and improper movement around the jaw joint, the temporomandibular joint there. A slew of onsets and causes. Uh, now this uh, does not associate to lockjaw. Lockjaw is something completely different. Um, now, again, it could be idiopathic on its onset. It could be overuse. It could be uh, infection. It could be injury. You know, any any of those possibilities there. Um, so, with the temporomandibular joint dysfunction, there's usually inf inflammation or some sort of um, the articular disc might have, have moved or split or something along those lines. Um, Whatever the cause, whatever the reason is, uh, there's a few avenues in which uh, therapy and intervention can come into play. So usually the best interventions occur with uh, just rest first, then medications might be used, uh, physical therapy might be used, and especially massage can and should be used in my opinion. Now, um, especially in certain states where they allow interoral massage. And uh, Florida here, which we are in, is one of those states that does allow interoral massage. So you can actually work the inside of the jaw and get to the inner uh, muscles and trigger points of the masseters that might be causing the temporomandibular joint dysfunction. Next, we're looking at what we call trigeminal neuralgia. So trigeminal neuralgia, we might have uh, seen that before. We have the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve is the fifth cranial nerve coming off of the brain. And so this nerve will innervate and uh, receive sensations <clears throat> or send sensations to areas of the face. Now, Trigeminal neuralgia could be idiopathic in its onset. It could be related to direct trauma. It could be who knows, right? There's many types of causes and uh, you'd have to look at each individual case for their uh, diagnosis. Now, what exactly is trigeminal neuralgia characterized as? Well, it's characterized as extreme pain around the face. Uh, so now it could happen higher, but most of the time it's from the cheekbone down to the jaw. Now the trigeminal nerve does innervate a little bit higher, uh, even like right next to the eyes, but most of the pain usually comes around the jaw and uh, comes around the cheekbones and down to the jaw. Uh, and this is usually a big contraindication for massage just because of the amount of pain that they're in. It's not just like, a, oh my God, this is just a dull pain that I'm living with. This is usually pretty excruciating pain. So they probably wouldn't even be coming to see you and lie on your table um, if they had this anyways, but if they did, um, I mean, I guess if they still wanted to go through the massage, don't have them face down to cause pressure on those areas and then just be careful of working around the head and the neck and the face. Next, we're looking at what we call a concussion. So most people are pretty familiar with what a concussion is. Well, we looked at a contusion already. A contusion is a bruise. A concussion is literally a bruising almost of the brain. So this is where um, heavy trauma or heavy impact or sudden, um, uh, sudden stopping or uh, blunt force trauma to the head causes the brain to actually shift and, and hit the 
areas of the skull causing a brain, uh, causing a, a contusion there, a bruise in a sense. Now, um, if someone comes to your office and they say that they've you know hit their head or they've been involved in a car accident or uh, you know or playing sports or anything like that and that they hit their head violently uh, and that they you know felt dizzy you know felt weird if they even blacked out um, and make sure that they went to their doctor and they're cleared first and make sure you get a doctor's note before that uh, especially uh, if they say they didn't go to the doctors because you want them to get checked out for a concussion no matter what because they can be pretty severe and they can be uh, pretty detrimental to your clients health so make sure if they do talk about having uh, head trauma or injuries that they do get cleared uh, before they come get your massage the next condition we're looking at is called military neck. So military neck kind of uh, associated to how military men stand at attention. They sit straight up. So just because you're in the military does not mean that you will get this condition. It's just an association. Because what happens with military neck is that the natural curve, that natural lordotic curve of the cervical region of the neck instead of being bowed forward is straight up it actually loses its curve or it reverses the curve and this is what we call military neck the next condition we're looking at is called whiplash we all are understanding of what whiplash is this is obviously the sudden uh, movement jerking and um, violent movement of the neck and the head causing usually strains in the muscles or musculature in the area uh, and it's very uh, dependent on understanding what happened in the accident and how the accident occurred for you to know what muscles might be involved and what my muscles might need to be worked for instance if someone were to uh, hit someone from the rear if they had their front end collision that means that their bodies are going forward and so more than likely that anywhere along the posterior chain might be uh, problematic and then their head might snap back so uh, I'd say first and foremost probably the posterior chain and then maybe the anterior neck if someone's hit from the back well they're going back uh, their bodies are, are leaning back or extending which means anywhere in the anterior chain might be problematic if they are t-boned on the let's say driver side of the um, car then they're going like this which anywhere on the left lateral chain of the body could be problematic and then vice versa for a passenger side collision so understanding and and talking with your client of how it happened i know it's hard to make them relive and talk about these you know traumatic experiences might be but getting more and more understanding as you can to help your clients is, is better and more beneficial for them and for your therapy. So finally, the last condition we're looking at is called torticollis. Now, torticollis is possible uh, for babies to develop. It's also possible for adults to develop depending on certain things. So usually it could be an overuse injury, it could be a tightening injury, it could be you know idiopathic in its onset in general. What torticollis is, is a contraction of the SCM muscle which causes the head to lean to one particular side and be stuck in this fashion. So again, this happens with babies, uh, but it also can happen with uh, certain individuals, uh, especially myself. After a car accident, I actually developed torticollis as well, and I was stuck like this for a good while. So again, that could also be associated with your whiplash, and a massage could help greatly by helping to relieve the uh, SCM muscle there. So guys, that's going to do it for our pathologies and need to know structures. Uh, go ahead and take your notes and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.